All right, so here we are. I think you're going to go ahead. There we go. Social cognition part two. So uh, we've talked about how schemas, uh, you know, affect that is help and bias. Uh, you know how we uh, attend to the situation, how we remember things, and how we process information. Now let's talk about how scheme schemata actually work. Uh, so when we, what I mean is, what are our models of how uh, you know social thinking occurs? And to explain that, I have to talk about the theory behind the uh, semantic network. And semantic means meaning. Wait a second, I didn't want that. Go back. Semantic means meaning. Uh, as in meaning or knowledge. So when I say a semantic network, I'm talking about a knowledge network. And the knowledge network is made up of nodes, that is locations that contain one piece of information, and pointers or pathways, which are connections between nodes. And what I'm really talking about is hypothetical because we don't really believe that we have nodes and pointers in our brains. The nodes and pointers are in our minds. The mind is a hypothetical idea about how the brain works, but it's not a actual model. That is, we would never expect to find pointers or nodes, maybe, uh, in our brain, though some researchers today are saying, maybe these models are not that hypothetical. So the other thing that we need to keep in mind is the idea of priming. Uh, priming occurs when a concept or other knowledge structure is automatically triggered. I need my pen. I need to find my pen. Triggered or activated by an environmental stimulus, thereby becoming more likely to affect subsequent thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Uh, let's unpack that slowly because this is critical. So priming occurs when we're presented with a concept with yeah. pen never works. There. Priming occurs when we're presented with a concept concept. And this automatically triggers uh, you know another thought, feeling, or behavior. And if you remember from last week, Many of the terms here, such as automatic, uh, environmental stimulus, that sounds just like what I was talking about with implicit processing. And indeed, that's kind of what we're talking about here. That is, uh, when you see the word R-E-D, that is, uh, what's going on is that is priming uh, the concept red automatically. So reading something in the environment automatically primes it, but priming theory is going a little bit beyond that, saying that not only is the concept activated, but there, uh, there, but in addition, uh, similar thoughts or constructs become activated and so you're thinking about them also. So when you read red, you think about the concept red, but then you also start thinking about fire trucks because in some cases they're red, or at least for old people like me. And so let's talk about priming in the context of the semantic network theory. And so here is my uh, semantic network for the schema bear. Remember, this is the schema I had for bear before, and this is how that schema would be uh, illustrated in uh, network theory. There is a node for bear, the, the word bear. There are pointers or pathways leading to the other pieces of information. Bears have claws. Bears can be black or brown. Bears kill people and bears are big. 
And so when I say bear to you, what happens is that node in your semantic network gets activated. And I have the little starburst here to indicate that it's kind of activated or electrified or ignited. And then what happens is the activation continues along the pathways. And so uh, when I say bear, what happens is it activates uh, the node for bear, but then it also primes, oh, there's the term, primes nearby nodes through this spreading activation. And that's a key term there, spreading activation. So priming occurs in the semantic network because of this spreading activation. You activate bear, and the pathways become active, and the activation spreads to the nearby nodes. So when you're thinking about bears, uh, you start to think about these big things that are brown or black that have claws, and they kill people. But you don't think about computers when you think about bears, because activation dies out over distance in your mind. And so bears and computers are two distant concepts. And so, well, if I say bear, that will prime or activate claws and kills people. The activation starts, but then it dies out before it gets to computers. And so, like I said before today, no, before today, if I say bear to you, uh, you don't really think about weightlifters when you think about bears, so activation dies out. So if I say bear to you, you don't think about weightlifters. Whoa, what's this? It's a bear weightlifter. Oh my gosh. And so after today, what happens is by pairing, by showing you the bear weightlifter photo, and by saying bear weightlifter to you so many times, that is, each time you're exposed to a stimulus, uh, that brings two nodes closer together. So every time, temporally, that is close in time, I say bear and weightlifter, I bring those two nodes closer together. Ooh. Every time you see bear weightlifter picture, those two nodes get closer together. And so, after today, after today, uh, when I say bear, you're going to be a little bit more likely to think about weightlifters because I've actually changed your semantic network. And this is not just an interesting example, but this is how we learn things. We learn things because they're paired together. And as I've said before, uh, when we think about things together, often habitually that becomes an implicit process that is we just know these things without needing to consciously think about it and so all of these things about cognition kind of fit together uh, the idea of priming uh, semantic networks implicit and uh, explicit processing they all are part of the same mega theory oh bear weightlifter again so after today, when you say bear, you're going to think bear weightlifter because I've brought this into you and now you're saying, ah, oh, you know, this is part of my semantic network. And so priming in terms of, uh, the, you know, the semantic network describes how we think, how we feel, and how we actually behave. For example, let's say that I'm going to put on some clothing and I need to iron it. And so here's my semantic network. I know that irons remove wrinkles in clothing and irons are hot and irons are hot and they could burn. They could burn clothing, so I have to be aware of that, but they can burn me. And that could cause me pain, no pain. And so I'm going to look out and I'm going to move slowly and be careful because uh, the iron could burn me. And so the way our semantic networks are set up, 
uh, what we've learned through association during our lives, uh, that primes one thing, but that describes how we feel and think about things and how we end up moving. And indeed, priming, when we go out into the real world or the, uh, you know, into, you know, uh, actual behavior, we can see examples of how people can be primed to think certain things, people can be primed to feel certain things, and indeed people can be primed to actually behave in different ways. And so uh, we can prime people to feel, think, and behave in different ways. And it's a very powerful process once you understand it. Of course, if you don't understand it, normal life is going to, you know, prime you all the time, and that's the way our brains work, and that's the way we learn and behave. But once psychologists have understood this, now we can actually start to, you know, uh, recognize how it will affect people and how we could affect people uh, based on taking over this semantic network and priming the way that we want to. And so that's a pretty big promise, so let's actually uh, you know, come through with that. Social psychology can cash that check its mouth has writ written. And so uh, this is um, one of my favorite experiments from the last 15 years, Ferguson and Hassan on the automatic association between America and aggression for news watchers. This is a great example of a lot of things, and I'm going to mention them all. Uh, but it's going to be an example of priming. It's going to be an example of how priming can cause you to feel certain things, and priming can also cause you to act in certain ways. And all of these ways, since the priming is occurring probably implicitly, unconsciously, we're not going to be aware of it consciously. So here's the abstract. Where am I? The abstract for the article. So stop the video and read it and uh, you should have a good understanding of what the experiment is about from reading the abstract because I'm just going to go directly to the first experiment. So in this first experiment what they did was this. Uh, subjects were primed with an American flag or not. Uh, and the way they did it was really interesting. Uh, they had a textbook sitting on the uh, desk and the textbook was for American history. And, uh, you know, if they were in the prime condition, they came in and the textbook was face up with a American flag on the front cover. And in the control condition, the textbook was face down with just words on the back. And so that's how they prime people with the American flag. Now, why are they priming people with the American flag? Well, we have to talk about their semantic network or their learning history regarding America. And what the researchers uh, hypothesized was that uh, given your history in terms of what media you watch and how much you watch it, it may create connections or associations in your mind between America and something else. And one of the things they were interested in looking at was the associations between America and aggression. Now, uh, if you were born in America like me and enculturated in America, you think that America is like the most wonderful, peaceful country in the world. Uh, but not really. America is pretty aggressive. And even though, uh, you know, uh, we talk in America about America is this wonderful country that's very peaceful, uh, we also go gaga over war. Uh, news networks love it when we go to war and bomb somebody because their ratings go up because people are all excited. And uh, so that's just a normal fact. Also, some networks, you know, really take advantage of this. For example, Fox News uh, is explicitly designed to really push the idea of American power and American military power. And Fox News is to encourage that association between America and 
aggression or military power. So the researcher said uh, the flag or no flag, remember we're talking about this is like a behavior equals a function of the person interacting with the environment. And so the environmental factor here is the prime, whether or not the book is face up or face down. The personality factor, the internal factor, is how much Fox News that they watched. And they asked people how much you watch different news sources, and they identified which sources and how much. And so they classified people based on whether or not they were in the upper 50% of the distribution for watching Fox News or whether they were in the lower 50% of the distribution for watching Fox News. And that is the person variable. So we have priming and we have uh, the uh, you know, person's uh, learning history. How do we measure it? What's the dependent variable? The dependent, the, the, the dependent variable is the number of aggressive thoughts. I said that priming can affect how we think and feel. So, okay, it will. It'll affect how we think. Well, how do you measure aggressive thoughts? Well, that's actually very easy. You give people a list of words and you say, this is a completion task. And so, when you see this, I want you to fill in that blank and complete it. And of course, there are two very common words that start out W-A blank. One is war, the other is was. And of course, one is associated with aggression, like G-U blank, gun, gum, gut, gut, guy. So only one is associated with aggression. And so we give this to people, uh, give them 20 of them, and we see out of those 20, how many do they actually choose the aggressive uh, you know, word to complete out of the non-aggressive words. And that's how we measure their aggressive thoughts. And so we see this here, a uh, classic crossover interaction. That is, uh, interaction or behavior is a function of the uh, person and the environment. That is, uh, when you have no prime, we see that the high Fox News people have a very low level of aggressive thoughts. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, the low Fox viewers, they have a moderate level of aggressive thoughts. But then, what happens when you prime people with the American flag? And you notice the people who aren't exposed to Fox News that much their level of aggression actually drops a little bit. But the people who are exposed a great deal to Fox News, the level of their aggression shoots up. Wow! Or the level of their aggressive thoughts, excuse me, shoot up. Wow, that's amazing. So what we see here is that there is an association between your learning history, that is whether or not you've been watching a lot of media that associate America with aggression, or if you watch just a little media that associate America with aggression, and whether or not we prime America, then automatically we activate all of these aggressive thoughts. And then here's the third experiment, which is pretty amazing. Uh, again, the same person variable, uh, news conditions, medium versus max, uh, minimum, excuse me, versus max, and no prime versus flag prime. However, the dependent, uh, the procedure and the dependent variable are different. Uh, they prime people by flashing the uh, flag or a control image on a computer screen. They do this for like, uh, you know, 20 milliseconds, 25 milliseconds, 
that's not long enough to consciously be aware of it, but it's long enough uh, for it to activate or prime your semantic network. And then the dependent variable was you did this long computer task for the experiment. And then after working on it for like 20 minutes, the computer says ah, error, and the researcher says, you know, bangs on the computer and says, what the heck? Oh, I'm sorry, I lost all the data. You're going to have to start all over again. Uh, and then, now that made you pretty mad, made most people pretty mad. And then what they do is they're recording it, and they have judges rate people on how aggressive, how angry or hostile they seem. Are they pretty much neutral, or are they pretty hostile, or are they pretty mellow? And so let's take a look. Uh, after, uh, if you had a max level of uh, Fox News, after this computer accident, you were pretty chill. Uh, however, those minimum, you were kind of angry and hostile towards the researcher, saying, "Well, gee, I wish I was at you know you know doing something with a professional. That would be something that would be considered hostile." But then. Look at the, what happens when you prime them with a flag. Those Newsmax people, look at that. They become really hostile, but then the newsmen, the people who don't watch a lot of Fox, after seeing the American flag, they become pretty mellow. So we see a very powerful priming effect of the American flag based on what should be in your semantic network based on what type of media you expose yourself to. Wow, that's amazing. And something I'd like to always point out, no participant reported seeing the flag or noticing anything, anything unusual in the study. That is in experiment number three. Uh, they were on the computer screen, the flag flashed so fast, consciously they didn't see it. So oh, consciously they didn't see it, so this meant that what was going on was the prime was affecting their, their implicit semantic network only. Consciously, they were not aware of it, so we're talking about implicit processing only. So all of this was working below the level of awareness of the subject. And one reason why I like to mention that is because of uh, you know the idea that priming, we could be primed in any situation, and we may not consciously be aware that we have been primed or we're acting in a certain way. And so, if you think about it, that's kind of scary. That is, I have uh, unconscious uh, you know, sch schemata that I'm not aware of, and it could be primed automatically without me being aware of it, and then the schema makes me uh, act or say things or behave in different ways and that's kind of scary. So uh, I always like to talk about well what makes that stop or what can we do about it and that is known as unpriming and let me clean this up erase all and pen twice. I don't know why it makes me do pen twice but so we have the schema is primed and if the schema is not expressed in thought or behavior, the schema's effect can persist unconsciously for a long time. Some research studies have found that it would uh, be in effect for minutes, others hours, other days. Uh, we really don't know for sure, but it probably is long lasting. So something could prime you, like the subjects who left that experiment uh, by Ferguson and Asin, uh, they could have been walking around uh, aggressive after, because they're a Fox News viewer who saw an American flag. They could be walking around for a long time aggressive. Actually, they, they weren't. I'll explain that uh, sometime later in the course. So what can we do about this? Well, one thing to do is unpriming. That is, uh, when the schema is expressed somehow in behavior or thoughts, 
that somehow dissipates the effect of the schema. And so if we're in a situation where we think this a schema may, I mean, a, uh, you know, a, a schema may be active or may be primed, one way to uh, negate the effect of that schema on our behavior or thoughts is saying to ourselves, hey, wait a minute, I may be responding to a schema, I should think about what I'm doing. And research shows that, yes, indeed, uh, to negate the effect of a schema, that's pretty much all you need to do. And that's my cue to say that's the end of part two, and I'll see you for part three.